everyone, it's Jane from Southpaw Creative. I just wanted to take some time out to uh, appreciate this amazing little watercolor set. I'm gonna be trying it out today, and it's by Jane Davenport, and these are available at Michael's. I had got this miraculously for a 60% off coupon, which they never do. So retail price is $29.99, and I got these for about $12, I think. I can't do math in my head, so don't even expect me to give you a roundabout. Um, <laughs> it was these are the 12 colors in the set and I did I did cheat and I took them out just to kind of look at them before I bought them but I was pretty much sold on them so how cute is that though they've got the little uh, Jane Davenport portraits on the back to show you the different colors and then inside this reminds me of the Prima Marketing watercolor confections They're very similar in nature with their setup they got the nice little metal box little Jane Davenport and it's really really cute I love that funky color it's nice mint green matches my my kitchen uh, it's got the thumb little thumb grip on the back I like that a lot so you know if you're doing plein air I guess you would hold it like that so I don't ever do it like that so but it is nice to have it there it's nice and convenient so you know open this up it's the bright palette she also has a neutral palette which is kind of like uh, I guess skin tones uh, or, or at least they're aimed to be skin tones so paint till you faint i like that so here are the most adorable i'm going to put the light on this so you can see it a little bit better but how cute are these i mean i almost hate to unwrap them they're so adorable and they've got the little portraits on them and i think i'll actually save the wrappers because they're really really cute and they have these really cute names like frida and mystic and 70s eyeshadow that's really really cute so um, i'm going to go ahead and sketch out some stuff and open these up do a little color mapping and we are going to paint with these or i'm going to paint with these i'm going to tell you my experience with them so let's go ahead and get started So this is almost dry. I'm really happy with the color selection overall. I am a little surprised about these three in general. This one particular, uh, Frida, I was kind of, it's a little bit different than what I thought it would be. I guess I thought it would be a little bit more red, as you can see, but it's still a beautiful color. It kind of reminds me a little bit of the um, Dr. P.H. Martin's Cyclamen, and so does this as well. So you kind of got three similar colors right here, but they are beautiful. And I mean, you know, right next to each other, they look similar, but I'm sure that once you get starting to paint that it looks probably a lot more distinctive. So I'm not gonna judge just yet. I'd probably give it a four out of five as far as the color selection goes. You got a beautiful uh, indigo color here called ink, and I really like that. And you can see how pigmented they are, and you can see how easily they, they are activated with water. So um, Ladybug could be a little bit brighter, but like I said, I'm going to paint with them, see how they work out, and um, we're going to go from there, okay? I do want to note that these colors are light fast and I will show you the printout from the Jane Davenport website and um, it'll show you the different light fast. Uh, it, there's a chart where you can print it out and it shows you the pigment numbers and the light fast reading. Uh, I did have some frustration with this piece in particular, mostly because um, I don't know if I was just off on my mojo or what the deal was, but it was like I found myself really frustrated with painting yesterday and today. And um, I also made the fatal mistake of trying to lift some color with an eraser and the paper was not dry and I was too rough and next thing I know I had it fill up. So um, before I completely destroyed it, uh, I decided to give her um, a little facial marking um, that's a big giant turquoise streak and just to kind of cover it up because I don't give up on my paintings that easily, even though I really can't use it for a sale or anything like that because the quality isn't 110% the way it should be. So, you know, this is well, this wasn't supposed to be a masterpiece anyways. It was more to check out the colors and see how they acted on paper. And this is hot press paper. This is a, a Fabriano Studio watercolor 140. I would probably, in hindsight, go and use cold press instead. And um, the reason why is because it just totally, the color just, the pigment just soaked up on paper. It was just really... Um, really super absorbent with these colors and I'm not sure if it's because it was a bright color or they were you know super pigmented or what the deal was but um, I don't really suggest using them with hot press paper at least not Fabriano maybe there's another brand that works maybe I should have done this with my uh, Moulin du Roy 
uh, that can take more um, water applications because I am very heavy on the watercolor uh, application. And but other than that, you know what? It, it's mostly about my performance um, that I had a problem with. These colors are just absolutely gorgeous whenever they lay down. And if you love bright colors like I do, um, I'm a total sucker for color. <laughs> <laughs> so whenever I saw these, I was like, ah, I have to, I have to get them. So the, um, the watercolor palette is mostly cool tones. Um, however, you can get some earthy tones out of them and some muted tones, which you'll, sh I'll show you later on. And, um, I had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun with this particular, um, not so much the painting itself, but, um, I was really, really, I had a lot of fun painting the echinacea flowers at least. And uh, the hair was fun. Uh, you know, the colors, they definitely drew um, attention to the eye towards like her, her eyes and the brighter colors, like the, um, uh, the bright green, the Gemini color, uh, the yellow, of course, always catches the, the attention. So I actually, um, I, I corrected a few mistakes with some um, Bleed Proof White by Dr. P.H. Martins. These particular colors, um, if you're not used to bright colors, uh, you might find them a little bit difficult to work with just because they're just so pigmented and so bright. So you'll have to water them down a little bit and make them more transparent and then just kind of layer it up as you go. And um, other than that, you know, I mean, I, I really enjoyed, I enjoyed this piece. I enjoyed working with the colors. I'll definitely be working with them again. Uh, there is a neutral palette that Jane Davenport offers and, um, I'll explain later, but you know, one of the reasons why I wish I would have gotten it was because I could work with the skin tones a little bit easier. Uh, but I wanted to go for something a little bit radical and, and bright. Uh, the best friend color I used a lot because it's very much like opera pink and, and I really enjoyed the Frida uh, shade and the, the ink, um, I was, once it dried, it actually um, ended up being less pigmented than I hoped it'd be, but you know what? That's kind of the nature of the beast when it comes to watercolor. It doesn't matter how bright your colors are, uh, they're going to, you know, dry a little bit lighter than what they are whenever they're wet. That's just how, it, you know, the paper works with it. So um, paper is made of, you know, cotton and, and different fibers and they just soak up that pigment and that's just how it happens. But I have no complaints about the palette itself as long as, you know, you personally love bright colors and you're willing to be a little bit bold in your approach to things um, that I say that you would probably enjoy this as much as I did. So I'll definitely be using it in the future. And, um, you know, this is not a student quality paint. Uh, this is this is definitely made for artists and, and, um, and for mixed media folks, too, as well. So she ends up having kind of a Gaga, Bowie, Katy Perry thing going on. <laughs> she wasn't what I thought I had envisioned in my mind at the end result, but it's okay. It, it totally, it still rocks, I, I guess. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it was a blast. I really, I feel like this is a completely unique palette because it's, it's so... It centers around such a beautifully pigmented bright colors that I've never seen anything quite like it before. And uh, you actually can get some skin tones out of it. And as you can see around her, um, her hands as well, you know, I kind of mixed it up with some purple. And then I was able to mix up some mauve with the Frida and uh, some of the, I think it was the Mystic. And um, I'll show you the chart later on. But, uh, you know, it's, it's not, it, you would think it would be really hard to work with bright colors. And it is a challenge, but it's a lot of fun. It's a good challenge. And I believe that it's, it's very imperative to work with a limited palette every once in a while so that you can challenge yourself into, you know, being able to see things a little bit differently. So if this is something that you're looking to do, then I, you know, I highly suggest, you know, for the, the value for the money is incredible. I just gotta say, because you'd be paying a lot more if it was, um, you know, a professional grade name. So here's the final painting. As you can see, um, I did, like I said, I had a few um, goof ups with this. I don't know exactly um, if it was because it was hot press or whatever, but it just soaked right up on the page. And um, I did do 
some color mixing on another piece of paper, which is cold press, and it seemed to behave a little bit better on that one. So um, you actually can, with such a bright palette, you can actually mix quite a few muted colors and quite a few earth tone colors for those of you who are looking for, uh, you know, some more natural, you know, options coming out of the palette. Um, but I would probably recommend for artists that are looking to use more neutral tones, she does have a neutral palette, which I think probably in hindsight I should have bought both of them to counterbalance them and kind of even each other out but it was a lot of fun drawing something and painting with something that was so incredibly bright because I just I, I'm a sucker for color I love bright colors and um, these certainly caught my eye and the structure of these uh, little tins they're very very sturdy just very high quality you can actually get another probably row of half pans or a couple full pans in there if you want to customize it and they close right up and Let's see here, we got, so I went ahead and printed out the um, the Pally watercolors, which you can get on her website, and it does have the pigment numbers and the light fast ratings, so kudos to Jane Davenport for doing that. And um, there are some of them that are, you know, one star on the light fastness, like the Royal and um, Best Friend, which really, really surprised me. And also the um, the printout, and it wasn't, it wasn't just the printout, but it was like this on screen, um, the Best Friend looked really super, super light, in comparison to what the actual, see, if you can, that and that, it, it looks like an opera pink almost. So some of these um, colors are actually slightly paler um, on the screen and whenever you print them out, but the whole idea is that it's a bright watercolor palette. So I would rather them be more pigmented and brighter than be, uh, you know, more transparent and be less pigment pigmented. And then it would be really disappointing for those of us who really like bright colors. So it's all in, you know, personal preferences to what kind of palette you like to use. I think even though this kind of looks like a Katy Perry um, tour poster, <laughs> <laughs> Usually I don't diss my own artwork, but you know, I, was, I wasn't I was always the happiest with this piece. But um, I really do enjoy the colors and I really like working with bright colors and using unconventional colors um, for certain areas of a painting. So um, it was a good learning experience too. So, and, and it's nice to know that you can go back and mix the colors pretty well. But if you're still looking for some decent, you know, skin tones, um, I was able to get a few skin tones, but they were more on the warm color side, which is really odd because this is a, a very cool toned palette. So, um, but nothing quite like the flesh tones in the neutral palette. So there you go. So my mistake was that I didn't get the neutral palette. So anyways, um, thank you for watching. Um, hit that subscribe button. You'll see lots more reviews, a lot more fun stuff on this channel. So, okay, keep creating. Thank you.